So you got to get the mixtures right. You got to have outside air and return air mixed properly. You have to use math for this, or do you? All right, this is Eric Stromquist with Control Trends and uh, Stromquist and Company. This is the second in a series we're doing for the HVAC Controls Professional on indoor air quality. And so in this episode, you're going to learn different methods to get the settings right. We'll teach you some simple math, okay? And we'll also teach you a couple ways you can get your mixture right using temperature and CO2. We've been a distributor of, of HVAC controls products for over 60 years. So we've seen a lot uh, of controls and control strategies over the years. And we've seen a lot of great trainers. And we found one of the best, Tim Shambly. He's an HVAC control pro from Atlanta. Tim does a great job. And in part two, he's going to answer these questions for you. If you haven't seen part one yet, be sure to go back and check that out. That's where Tim goes into sick building syndrome and how to know if you have a problem. Okay, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do. Reach out in comments. Let me know what you think. And if there's anything else we can do video-wise you're interested in, let us know. CO2 sensors. Integrate that with automation. So the automation knows what the level is in, in this general area. And then we can uh, um, respond accordingly to the system. More to follow. So uh, if you, you, you have this in your handout, this is a, a good, if you, we, we tend to hear a common term thrown around, we want to have about 20 uh, CFM per person. If you equate that to uh, your parts per million that we saw on this 800 and 1,000, you say 800 is like uh, 20 CFM, 1,000 is 15 CFM per person. Uh, that corresponds to this table right here. And so, uh, and, and we, we have guidelines um, in our codes, mechanical codes, that for office, for restaurants, for schools, they recommend a certain um, CFM per person of ventilation air, of fresh air, that outside air. Okay. Depends on the application. Now, we can uh, do a little bit of math to see where we are because sometimes just because we have outside air dampers on our buildings, does it mean that we have the proper amount of outside air? Now, I have a uh, formula here that you can actually f figure the percent of outside air if you'll take and measure your, mi uh, your mixed air temperature uh, and uh, from that the difference between your mixed air and your return air divided by your outside air temperature difference from your return air temperature. Everybody follow me? So if we actually go by this example, and this is doing a few different things. I'm just exercising that bottom <coughs> formula. If we said our return air is 75 degrees, mixed air, this is saying it's uh, 63 degrees, uh, outside air, uh, they were saying is 30 degrees. So what do we have here? This is advanced math, isn't it? Somebody want to work the math for me? We have all these smartphones in this room. <laughs> What's the difference between 63 and 75? What's the difference between 30 and 75? All right, 12 divided by 45 equals. All right, so what is that? 26% uh, ish. I don't worry about the decimal points because you know, when you take your thermometer and stick it in there, are you, uh, Looking at it, you know, leaving it in there long enough, you know, you might be off by a half degree. Okay, so 
What do you think about that? Is that easy? Now, that will tell you just through temperature, taking some temperatures, working some very easy math, what your percent outside air is for, for that given air handler, so to speak. Easy enough. Why not do it? Now, here's a little caveat. You want some good separation between your temperatures. If it's 75 degrees outside, do you think the math works? It's too close. You've got to have some temperature differential in there. So if it's real cold, real hot, the math works. If it's kind of mild, not so much. There's another way you can do it though. Does anybody have a handheld CO2 sensor? A couple. It's not a prevalent device, at least amongst us. It's, it's, it's a handy device to have. What if we exchanged our temperatures for CO2 reading? So it'd be your mixed air CO2, your return air CO2, outside CO2, return air CO2. Now the temperature is irrelevant and, and the CO2, get, of course, you, if you have a CO2 meter, you can go to the floor <laughs> and do it direct. <laughs> All right. But do you see how it's such an easy exercise? Why not do it? I'm, I'm curious, does anybody in this room do this? The answer is no. All right, I'm not surprised. It, and it's so easy, do you think that maybe you might try it. Just see. Okay. And then uh, it, it shows you how to determine, well, is this percentage okay? Well, it kind of depends on how many CFM per person. And that, that is determined by the use of the space. Okay. And the population of the space. So what... How do we get here? We've got our building, we've got our floors, we've got our air handler rooms, generally stacked. We'll have uh, generally a vertical shaft where we are dumping uh, outside air into our uh, mechanical rooms. You see this day in, day out, correct? Okay. Generally, we have a, a damper actuator, a damper with an actuator right there, typically. And if we were to blow this up and look at that spot, what we would notice is the linkage is off. Is that right? <laughs> That's, that's a story as old as time itself, because if you have linkage, you're going to disconnect it, right? Or if you have outside air dampers, the linkage is all jacked up. Okay, so there is a reason that we need this ventilation air. It's, it's fairly easy to manage it. In fact, let me show you how easy it is. <laughs> because you, we're, we, we like easy, don't we? What if, I love doing what ifs, what if we just mount a CO2 sensor in the room? Let's say we've got an analog signal coming out, 0 to 10 volts, and what if we marry that 0 to 10 volts to our 0 to 10 actuator on this thing to try to maintain a certain set point. Is that hard? 
Actually, this won't give you a set point. You might have to have a little controller in between, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, we, and by the way, we sell those. We have them in stock today. <laughs> or, uh, two for the price of two. Order for midnight tonight. <laughs> All right. Now, of course, if you have a big building, you're, you're going to have an automation system more than likely. Uh, and so the automation system is sampling and controlling. Okay. But you need to make sure that your sample is good. Make sure that your sensor, whatever it is, and it might be duct sensor, might be a wall sensor, might be an industrial looking thing or a nice attractive thing, whatever. And they, they come in many different uh, forms. Uh, if you, this would look nice in a um, office space. We also have, boy this sounds like a commercial doesn't it? We, we, we got something with a really nice display and so you can go Chevrolet up to Cadillac. <laughs> you can have them with a display without a display. Uh, plain Jane up to this thing will do it, tell you everything. It'll tell you how you're feeling in it. Well, maybe not go that far, but it, it, information can sometimes be very helpful. And we have ways of, give, uh, of giving you that information. All right, that's part two. Thanks so much to Control Pro Tim Shambly. All right, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and reach out in comments. All right, until next time, be bold, stay in control.